Hi there everyone, so in this video we're looking at the molecule ATP which is known as the universal energy currency. So we know that we need energy for lots of things, so I've just summarised them on this, uh, on this slide here. So we often talk about getting our energy from food. There is energy locked up in the bonds of food molecules that we eat and we need to find a way of releasing the energy that's locked up in our food and then harnessing that energy so that we can do um, all of these different things. Okay, so producing heat energy, moving, active transport, and so on. Um, we can't just release the energy all at once. It needs to be done in a series of stages, um, in a series of reactions, enzyme control reactions, and that's what we know as respiration. But in terms of being able to take the energy that is locked up in our food molecules, and then being able to move it somewhere else within a cell so that it's able to, for example, do active transport, we need a molecule that's able to move that energy from one place to another so that it can be used as and when the body needs it. And that's what ATP does. So ATP is a molecule, it's an energy transfer molecule. Um, it's made up of several parts. So we've got, first of all, um, oh, first of all, it's called ad adenosine triphosphate, okay, so ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Um, and it's actually technically a nucleotide, it's a phosphorylated nucleotide. So just like other nucleotides, um, we've, it's got, first of all, it's got um, our nucleotide uh, base here. So this is um, adenine. It then has a ribose. Okay, so it's got a pentose sugar here, so this is ribose. Um, and these two together, so the adenine and the ribose, makes the adenosine part. And then attached to the ribose, we've got three phosphate groups. Now these are not phosphate atoms. Each of these is a phosphate group, so we call it inorganic phosphate, or PI. So this is a phosphate group, which is phosphate um, and oxygen and hydrogen, so uh, a, a group there, so it's almost like a little molecule on its own. And there are three of those phosphate groups all bonded together. Because there are three of them, it makes triphosphate. If you only have two of them, then you've got ADP, adenosine diphosphate. And you can also only have one, in which case it would be adenosine monophosphate. So the reason why ATP is able to be used uh, to essentially sort of move energy from one place to another is because of the covalent bonds here. So these phosphate groups are negatively charged and so they, uh, they actually repel each other and that means that the covalent bonds here are quite unstable which means that they can be broken quite easily, they have a low activation energy. Um, and because they're broken easily um, it means that it's very easy for you know, the body to be able to utilise that ATP. And then when it's broken, so if this bond here is broken, and then we end up with ADP, because we've now only got two of them, and at the same time we then have our phosphate group, our inorganic phosphate separate. When that happens, a lot of energy is released. So 30.5 kilojoules per mole of energy is released when this third phosphate is removed from ATP to give ADP. So that release of energy is what the body uses to do work. So we've got a molecule which releases a lot of energy when um, it's broken up and when that phosphate is released. That happens very easily, so it's very readily hydrolyzed, which makes it um, very good at what it does. So we wouldn't want something that's very difficult to hydrolyze. It's very small, which means it can move around the cell really easily. Um, and it's water soluble, which means that it's able to take part in metabolic reactions. And this, um, what we've got now, which is our A, uh, sorry, hang on. We've now got our ADP and our separate inorganic phosphate. They can then be recombined. So ATP can be converted to ADP and PI, which can then get recombined into ATP. So ATP is just constantly being recycled, which again is another feature which makes it very suitable as a universal energy currency. Okay, so the interconversion of ADB and ADP 
So as we said, ATP can get converted into ADP and inorganic phosphate, PI. Um, and when that happens, it's a hydrolysis reaction because water needs to be added in order for that to happen. Okay, so the reaction is actually more complicated than um, just ATP being converted. It's an enzyme-controlled reaction and water has to be added as well. When ATP is converted to ADP, energy is released. And that's the energy that the body uses. We then can do a condensation reaction to convert ADP back into ATP, which means we're recycling our ATP. And that means that we don't actually need much ATP in the body because it's constantly being recycled. This condensation reaction actually needs an input of energy. And that input energy comes from respiration. So although we know that respiration releases energy, it actually needs an input of energy to start with. Okay, so you need a little bit of energy input to be able to get um, a large energy output. Okay, so we know that ATP is synthesized from ADP and PI, but we need to know how that actually happens. Um, and there are two main ways. Um, so first of all, here's our ADP molecule. And what we need is to add, and that went a little bit fast, let me just go back again. If we've got our ADP molecule, we know that we need to add um, an inorganic phosphate. So that inorganic phosphate molecule needs to come from somewhere. So what we need is some donor molecules. So we need other molecules which are able to donate an inorganic phosphate group, which then gets added onto our ADP to make ATP. So using phosphate from a donor molecule is called substrate level phosphorylation. Phosphorylation because we are adding phosphate group, substrate level because we use a substrate, we use a molecule and we take the phosphate from that molecule. The second way that ATP can be synthesized is called chemiosmosis. So osmosis, normally we talk about the movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane down a concentration gradient. Chemiosmosis uses some of those ideas, but in ten, instead of talking about water, we're talking about the movement of hydrogen ions. So in chemiosmosis, again, we're talking about a molecule of ADP, and we have to somehow add this inorganic phosphate. So this is now free. This hasn't come from a donor molecule. It's just inorganic phosphate, which is free in the cell. We have to have some energy to be able to put these two together to make that bond. So the energy comes from the movement of hydrogen ions. So here is a molecule, and it's an enzyme called ATP synthase. And it's actually a channel protein. So this here, all the way through there, is a channel. So this enzyme is a channel protein, um, and this, these parts can rotate, okay? They rotate around. And the ATP synthase is embedded in the cell surface membrane. So this here is the phospholipid bilayer. And part of what happens during respiration, which you'll learn about in detail um, later, is that a hydrogen ion gradient, a concentration gradient of hydrogen ions is built up. So that on this side, outside here, you have a high concentration of hydrogen ions. So protons have been moved out here. So we've got a high concentration of hydrogen ions here compared to a low concentration on the other side of the cell surface membrane. Um, uh, sorry, not cell surface membrane, it's the, the mitochondrial membrane. So that's also called an electrochemical gradient. When you've got this gradient, the hydrogen ions are going to want to move down, and they move through the ATP synthase molecule. So this hydrogen ion moves down through the ATP synthase molecule and ends on the other side. Because movement, kinetic energy, so it's a form of energy, that movement somehow, which you don't need to understand, is able to rotate this molecule. And the rotation of the molecule 
allows the ADP and the inorganic phosphate to be joined together. So chemiosmosis, by building up a hydrogen ion gradient and by moving hydrogen ions through ATP synthase, that movement of hydrogen ions allows that that provides the energy which allows this bond to be made here. And that's how chemiosmosis works. Okay, that's an overview of ATP, what it is and how it's synthesized.